Okay, so we are back. I have to get a more <laughs> expensive um, audio interface so I could have multiple <laughs> inputs so I don't have to do this. But I just wanted to say how amazing that was. I was like Thank really, you. I made the stank face at one point, which all musicians know the stank face is like the best compliment you can get. We like go like this to each other when we really like something. And like, yeah. oh my God, your voice, like I said, your voice, when you sing, it's like the clouds part in the sun. <laughs> you have such a good voice. And Thank why you. do I have a, like it's so in tune and everything. Like there's no mistake. Like it's just so good. Um, why do I have a feeling that you always were like naturally a good singer too? Like you probably didn't take lessons. I could be wrong, but um, I feel like you're a natural. <laughs> I mean, like my, my first lessons like with music have always, I think like with everybody, it's like always like the shower or singing along with the radio in the car. Yeah. Um, but uh, like growing up, like I, I was lucky, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, my, my father was a musician. My grandfather is a musician. Uh, my grandfather is a very successful musician. Oh, wow. <laughs> in Latin music. You know, it was, it was always funny because just like growing up, it's just like, all right, cool. It's like gold records, platinum records yeah. on the house. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. And like years later, I'm just like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> so like that was awesome. But like music was always has always been in the house. Um, whether or not like I was like good at it, it was just it was like the first like outlet, you know, like real outlet that just like made sense. It's like, all right. Uh, Cause I originally started off as a drummer cause that's what my dad oh, was. Wow. Um, so, you know, just like kind of playing percussion <laughs> and an actual drum set, but you know, little kid it's, you know, it's tougher. And it's just like, you know, girls don't really go for the drummers. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, you know, totally very uh, selfish reasons. Like, you know, when I first started like playing guitar, um, they, I went from like, I wanted to be an athlete and then it's like, all right, well, let me just, ride music out because you know this guitar is here let me just learn how to play it and it just kind of just went from that so I, I was very lucky that uh you know my father and my mother and like everybody in my family is very supportive of all of my crazy ventures so it's kind of like you were just um pretty much born into it because like you said it's in your blood your grandfather is a musician he's like a jazz like a latin jazz musician or uh, he's percussion band leader and yeah. singer yeah. um and his band la charanga casino is a style Charango is a style is a style of uh, Latin music and mm -hmm. is you know from Cuba and like I don't know the technical histories of everything because like there's still a lot that like I'm learning and mm -hmm. like uh, but it's yeah yeah. So. Are you 100 percent Cuban? I'm Cuban and Puerto Rican, but oh, mostly wow. Cuban. If you want to yeah. get into like math, like nobody yeah. has to do math. <laughs> but uh, I tried to do like one of those 23 and Me things, and it's just like, oh, you actually don't have enough DNA, so we can't tell you. We, you, you are. don't have. You're I'm not, like, you're you not a complete about? person. Yeah, you don't have any like, DNA. and I took like two tests, and it was like, nope, can't do it. They even sent me a letter, yeah. just like, if you try and do it again, like we can't refund you. Yeah. It's just, dude, you just can't do it. So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm an alien. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I guess mu um, there must be like music in a lot of Cubans' blood because my piano teacher who taught me how to play classical piano, she was Cuban and she was amazing. Like she was a natural. So there must be like a lot of musical genes. Yeah, we're pretty great. No, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah, you know, well, it's, uh, I, th I don't know how true this is, but like I know that, I think, but I, you know, don't quote me on it. I could be off base, but like Cuba is the smallest nation, but it's also like had one of the biggest cultural impacts with on music you know just like a yeah. whole bunch of stuff coming out it's like and then the, the fusion because it was just so much happening there you had you know you know um you know the the natives the taino indians there and then the spaniards coming in and then with that like the slave trade coming in so you had africa you know a lot of like afro-cuban jazz with its own huge yeah. thing so like it was just like a whole big whole, the caribbean itself was just like a whole big yeah. melting pot so um you know that's it's easy to, you know, it's easy to sing when you got good weather, I guess. You know, and, and it's, it's it's somebody who's going to be like, well, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Going we know, we know <laughs> there's like crazy stuff going on in the world, but music is a big unifier and yeah, it's kind of just like a perfect storm for things to happen, at least for for that anyway. I'm probably biased and someone's going to complain about it, but that's <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking into it. So uh, back to you. No. Back to me. <laughs> let me just let this off of me right now. I don't want to. <laughs> it's like, let me just. Yeah. I actually, uh, what you said before about like you were like, well, Cubans are the best. I was um, listening to this uh, Latina stand up comic and she was talking about how like she's like, there's a hierarchy of Spanish people and they're always arguing like who's the best. And she was like talking about how the Cubans think they're the best and how Puerto Ricans think they're the best. And do you find that there's like a battle between Puerto Ricans and Cubans in your family or uh, are they pretty cool? No, no, it's it's not like <laughs> that at all. Uh, for the most part, like we've been just kind of just raised Cuban but like it's it's don't tell him I said this but you know, <laughs> you know it's 
we're all the same people, you know. Um, like, you know, it's there's just so many similarities with a lot of things, and it's really just okay. The flag is a little different, but yeah, you know, you know and like there's like some, you know, like food, you know, it's there's differences, but like really as a whole, big picture, it's like there is no difference. There is no hierarchy, you know. Everybody's cool, at, you know cool at their shit are you so, gonna teach your child or children spanish i have to learn it first uh i'm i'm one of those i'm f- i'm first generation born in the u.s and uh as i've gotten older i am kind of i'm sad to admit that i'm really just like a white kid with a spanish last name <laughs> um and it is a lot of it was like through my own ignorance and just like being angry as a kid about it because like i couldn't speak spanish very well and everybody would make fun of me and tease me so i just kind of stopped and like it was kind of silly and stupid um, but I'm definitely, you know, my wife and I, we talk about it a lot, you know, because she's, you know, she's Syrian and, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of other things, too. So, like, we're definitely, you know, back to, you know, the whole kid is just like, all right, cool. We want to focus. And, like, we, you know, we're definitely going to be we're all going to be learning Spanish and then yeah. we're going to be learning, you know, if my brain can wrap around it, we'll be learning some Syrian, too. And it'll be. If you guys need a Spanish teacher, I actually um, I was a double major. I went to school for music and Spanish, so I could te- I could te- I'm the white girl, but I could teach you your own language. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, no, why not? Yeah, I've done like stuff like that. I haven't um, done any Spanish teaching in a while. I've been like focusing more on music teaching, um, but I've done stuff in the past, literally like that, where um, I had like there were parents that were Spanish that or they could speak Spanish that they wanted their kids to know Spanish but they're like but I don't want to be the one to teach them because they won't listen like I want a teacher so I was in this one situation where I was like it was so weird I was babysitting like in Spanish <laughs> like they're like you just have to like play with them but in Spanish and like it was like the weird and um oh my god the one of the cutest stories from from that is that there were twins and one was named Julio and Henry and I was trying to at one point I was trying to teach them the um, months and you know who like you probably know enough to know that Julio is July mm-hmm. um, and I was <laughs> I was showing them all the months like Mayo Julio like whatever and then the one kid like because they're twin brothers he goes I don't get it I see Julio where's Henry and I was <laughs> like I could, like they're like three and four years old and I'm like yeah this isn't working like, oh that's but. a beautiful genuine moment though <laughs> yeah. that's awesome like I see Julio but where's Henry. <laughs> Um, I've also had some funny things like in the uh, restaurant business where there's been like things lost in translation in the food orders. Um, one thing that cracks me up so much is like um, an idiom in English is people say um, pretty pleased with sugar on top. Like that's like a phrase, you know, that we say and it just means like I really want this. That's all it means. But <laughs> someone asked one of the um, Spanish chefs, she wrote, uh, can I please have extra cheese on my salad? Pretty please with sugar on top. And she wrote that on the ticket and they threw sugar all over her salad. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's just like little things like that get lost in translation and stuff like that. So Yeah. Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> that yeah. is funny. No, and it's, and it's, it's true. Cause like, you know, the, um, the flip to that, and I can't think of any like specific examples, but like, you know, there's phrases in any language, really like uh, Spanish, Italian, French, yeah. German, whatever, like just, idioms for them yeah that when you translate it over translate it over to english everybody's like what yeah you know, it's, it's like you know the spanish one that you know like if the band is awesome everybody seems like azúcar which is sugar yeah because the music is sweet it's so good but everybody's just like sugar like but why yeah like, like, like you, you just go woo so the, the sugar idiom goes both ways yeah like, you know it's you know it's it's cool it's sweet. versatile yeah that's true or like one thing i noticed in the spanish language that different countries um, like use the same word but in different ways and I remember what did I find out in one country they say bizcocho as like a cake and in another country it's like a whore <laughs> so like it depends which country you're in like like it literally is a like a cake or something or like a sweet dessert but in another country like they specifically use that to say whore and it's like okay it really depends where you are yeah so that's that's good to know gotta <laughs> gotta look that one up and just make sure it's just like well it's like just what you asked for it's yeah like, okay so one of my questions was your background of how you became a musician, but we kind of already went through that. Um, song writing songs. So my question for you about that is, um, when you write songs, are you the type of songwriter that kind of likes to get it out quickly, or do you kind of really take your time with it? Um, I am still trying to work out what kind of process I have with that. Um, it's, I'll, I'll have like a hook 
or just like a melody and I'll just kind of like loop it like just like play like cowboy chords or whatever on guitar. Cowboy chords, yeah. Um, you know, and just like kind of just like bounce, bounce back and forth and like I'll I'll hear it and then I'll just kind of just like marinate on that. And like I've always struggled um, lyrically with writing songs. Like I always, it's like a weird writer's block or just like a thing that, you know, just like something that I need to work on. It's just like just freaking write it. If it sucks, it sucks. Like sucking at something is the first step of being kind of good at it. So um, that's like the thing that I've always kind of just like went with, but like that song just kind of happened. Like, and like I, a lot of songs I've had, like just kind of happened, bleh, you know, and like, yeah. I'm lucky enough to have either like a, a thing, you know, something recording yeah. or, you know, like by the grace of whatever, like I remembered what I said, which yeah. is weird and wild. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I have a song that I used with my old band garden state line like i was stuck like we had like this cool music that we were like kind of jamming on and like we were just running with it and i'm like there's like what do we got i'm like i got nothing so i i collect the um the chinese fortunes from the fortune oh you cookies, do <laughs> and they're in my wallet so i just dumped them out and i put them on the table and i just did like a mad libs thing yeah and we have a song like just like just, with the just, fortune just the fortunes <laughs> and it's like all right well here we go this is what we're gonna do and um yeah, you know, that's I have a song called Inside Job, and that's how that song literally came oh my about. God. Like, we're it's just, all right, cool. I'm going to use this Chinese fortunes, and that's that's that. And that's pretty clever. Yeah, like sometimes, like you said, that writer's block hat. I, I find the same thing too. It's like sometimes certain things just come out, and they're just like, they just happen. They're almost against your will. Like, they're just like, bleh, come out of you. And then sometimes um, songs start with like, a small idea like you have a little something like a little chord progression or like one cool hook or one cool melody thing but all the other pieces are missing and it's like a puzzle like trying to piece it all together mm -hmm. and sometimes you just got to do weird things like that one of my friends said that um if he doesn't know what lyrics to write he will just like he'll just know what the song's about like the mood like let's say the mood whatever it's about happy he'll just like um jot down like Hundred, like a hundred words that make him happy and then he'll just like randomly like you said like kind of like the fortune cookie thing like choose different words and just like slop like slop them together you know <laughs> that's a good idea and yeah just write it down like, all right this that's cool like i'm gonna have to take it take that one to heart yeah you know just like all right cool like another thing in the pocket but yeah like like you said like a lot of it is just kind of just like whatever really like i've always been like whatever the song kind of calls for and just like you're saying just like it's not you're not even writing the song yeah. the song is just kind of writing itself like i kind of just let that go and then you find like stuff like that because like i've sat there and like i've tried to like force songs and they just suck yeah yeah you know and it's just like all right cool because it's like anything else like if you force it it's just gonna be like, that's why i think as like a creative person it's so important to like like you said always write down your ideas because you never know you might have a great idea that's just going to disappear so you always need like um your um, recording on your phone handy or like there'll be times where i'm like in the grocery store and i'm like Ooh, la, like like in the in the aisles because i just like you never know when ideas gonna pop up and it's a bad idea to be like oh i'll remember that later because yeah, sometimes you will but you won't that, always like, yeah musicians and artists always tell themselves like i'll remember it when i wake up no you won't no you, no, won't. you won't like no, so no matter where you are um this is advice for everybody <laughs> yeah. if you're an artist and it could be any type you know a writer or whatever if you have a good idea that comes to your mind write it down and you don't even have to use the idea like you can go through that's how i write my comedy stuff like i have like um i have hundreds of notes that i thought were funny at the time and like sometimes i go back to them and i'm like that's not funny at all but like i just <laughs> like well, like one like one of my notes recently said like the greenland shark lives for 370 years i'm like why was it, why did i think that was funny like i must have had some idea about it but i couldn't remember where i was going with it um because like it, i think like there's like some sh i was curious like what animal lived the longest and there's like the greenland shark lives a long time but i don't know why i thought it was funny but like what i'm trying to say is like just write every dumb idea down whether it's good or bad and then later come back to it and then you can like pick at it and decide which is the idea that has some potential and that's the thing you have to work on you know yeah, kind of just like trim the fat yeah a lot of stuff on it yeah no i, I get it I, that makes a lot of sense like my dad used to he used to call them like dream pages and he would just have like by his bedside he would just have like a notebook and whatever just write it down and like he would just come back and was like what the hell did i write yeah you like know? what does like, this even mean yeah it's just like you know right, cool well, like this lucid writing it's just like what? lucid writing yeah you know? and like that's kind of just like kind of like what it is you know like like am i awake am i dreaming what's going on have you ever um had any lucid dreams or anything like that um probably uh <laughs> it's, yeah i mean like conscious like it's it's wild like when like you kind of like 
in like a dream, like you kind of say, oh, I'm dreaming. Like, all right, cool. I'm going to like do whatever I want. Has that ever happened to you? Once or twice, like that I like consciously, like, I definitely like remember where it's happened. Like, and that's been like a really cool thing. And I try and recreate that. Um, and then, but not as often as I would like it to be, because that's like a really cool feeling. It's like, all right, cool. So I can totally do whatever I want right now. And that's like a really great feeling. And then like you wake up and it's just like, oh man, now I gotta go to work. Yeah, <laughs> it happened to me once, like um, that I could remember. It might've happened other times, but the only time I could remember it, I was in like a theme park. Like I had a lucid dream and I all of a sudden was aware that I was dreaming like in my conscious mind, but in my dream world, I was still in the dream world. And I, I think I was in like Disney world or something. Like I was in some type of like crazy theme park. And I just remember stopping in the dream and like being like, wait a second, if this is, is this a dream? And then I, I somehow confirmed it with myself. I was like, I'm going to pinch myself or like something weird like that and, or poke something. I, I don't know, th like something weird like that. And then once I realized it was a lucid dream, I woke myself up because I was so scared. And I'm like, why did I do that? Like, yeah. I was just like freaked out. Like, what if I never come back? Like, what if I, <laughs> what if I go exploring and then I'm just stuck in this other, I mean, I guess like being stuck in Disney might not be the worst thing, but like, I was like, what if I'm just like stuck in this alternative like reality and I just like kind of like woke myself up like, oh, and then as soon as I woke up, I was like, why did I wake myself up? I'm so yeah. pissed off. Yeah, that's kind of like weird. I mean, as long as you're not in like it's a small world or like the teacups, <laughs> yeah, no. like I guess like, you like, know, you're, you're here. set. Like that's pretty cool. But then I could have done whatever I want and I could have like shot them or something. <laughs> like, I don't that, know. Yeah. Don't get any ideas, people. I'm not going to go shoot up Disney World. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck a turn. No, uh, but like, yeah, it's it, dreaming is like freaking crazy. Right. Do you remember your dreams a lot? Like, are you a vivid, you remember your dreams or are you more of like a, what the hell? I don't remember my dream. I used to be. And um, then for like a, a while, like there was just like, just black, like nothing, <laughs> you know, it's just like for a while. But like now, like I uh, am remembering more dreams. Cause I think it's like, I think also like talking about it helps you remember it more. At least for me, like it's helped. Like I'll, I'll tell my wife, I'm like, I had the weirdest freaking dream. Yeah. The other day, or like, you know, like we, we talk about that all the time. And it's like, oh, I had that dream where like, you know, my arms and my legs are a thousand pounds and everything is like punching underwater. Oh, that's the worst. And stuff like, like yeah. that. So I'm like, e like that. Yeah. And then, you know, that's, I had another dream not too long ago where it's just like, no matter what I did, I'm like a kid playing peewee baseball. And like, no matter what I did, it was a home run. It was an awesome dream. I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's <was> great. <laughs> no matter you know, I'm not even trying. I'm just cranking yeah. out. I'm like, this is awesome. So I was like, it was like a cool, like power dream and stuff. But like lately, like now, like, I'll wake up and say, all right, cool. Like I have a like a weird song in my head. And was it the other day I had Olivia Newton John Olivia Newton John's uh do the locomotion. <laughs> and you know, and then I go down to my buddy's house and I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's yeah. like, what? I'm like, I don't know, man. It's been I, I've had it in my head all day. And then you don't realize it was like from a dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like that's like the funny thing now. It's like that's just kind of like my new game that I play with myself. It's like, oh, what song is it gonna be today? So it's like that, or you know kids songs is like why is this in my head now but all right speaking of songs like actually no no I, I had two thoughts and i'm like which thought do i want to follow right now the dreams thing i'm gonna follow that instead dreams are really weird because i don't think scientists like still even know what they are like i think like there's only so much studying that has been done and i think they know that um you have to dream like if you don't dream you'll go crazy or something like that but they still don't necessarily know like what is a dream like it's like the craziest thing you know yeah like that's why and there's like a like a random study too like everybody that's in your dream like every person in there is actually somebody that you've seen in your oh, life oh wow like, so you they, can't like make up a person in your dream no I, and you know and it's like or like if you do it's like an amalgamation of just like people that you've already seen yeah. but like i think that's kind of like a wild like fact because i mean like think about it like what is your brain other than like you know looking at the human body like you're just a computer so yeah. they even say it's like you need to shut off the computer or your phone or your laptop and just let all that information cycle and just yeah. kind of settle. And like if that doesn't describe like kind of like what a dream is, like maybe that's just like all the information that you process. Like, all right, cool. We're going to settle. And this is what you got. And then you take Lunesta and then all those floodgates just kind of open. And that's like a weird thing. I've never done this, but um, I really haven't done that. But it's like I feel like there's like gates. And I think a comedian, I think it was like Patton Oswalt probably did it. Mm -hmm. But like. You know, you have this dream. It's like, all right, cool. Like, I'm the naked in front of the class dream. Yeah. Or, like, you know, um, visiting somebody. Somebody's visiting me who, like, recently passed. Yeah. Like, that, that gate. Or, like, all these, like, other yeah. weird, like, chamber things. It it's is like, weird. Like, how you said it's a very computer-like thing. 
sometimes I do see a lot of like similarities between the way I feel and like a computer not not and I don't mean in the good way either I don't mean like that I'm so sharp I mean like when the computer is starting to like fall apart like that <laughs> like that part of the, the computer I just feel like it's interesting how like um like for example like you know when your computer like you've had it for a long time and it starts like the pop-ups and stuff I do feel like as I get older and like we live in these busy times I do feel like it's harder to focus and there's like pop-ups in my brain that I have to be like no exit out exit out exit <laughs> See, out where is the music coming from <laughs> yeah uh, I think I saw a meme about that yeah. like this is my brain like where's the music coming from I remember my grandma always had that issue because like she never had a computer like before and then um you know my grandfather he had passed away so she was all by herself so our family was like let's get her facebook so she has like socializing mm -hmm. and she was pretty sharp she figured out how to do it and everything and she she really got into this like online not real gambling like fake gambling where she would like play slot machines and like she never would exit out any of her things that she was looking up so there was always like this weird like slot machine music playing like in her house like, <laughs> 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 like the, the coin sound yeah yeah so that when i saw that meme it reminded me so much of my grandma because she like always had weird music playing in her house because of her computer <laughs> so before we leave the podcast would you like to exit with another song of yours or are you all songed out no 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 i'm happy to do it actually like i was hoping to play this song because like this song is, is going back to like the songwriting process and things like yeah. that um it's watching movies is like another big thing it's just like all right cool Gotta write this down now. So uh, this next song, I wrote this song watching the remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead, the one with Bing Rings on there, and like there was yeah. like that whole situation like where like in the in part in the movie where like the the girl's father gets bit, yeah, and it's just like that's like a rough, like how would I be like what would happen like if I got bit in the zombie apocalypse and like I had you know I gotta tell my loved ones like that this is what's going on and like and they are the ones that have to like. Put me down and you you like, wrote a song about this yes oh my I god did. it was like and uh so like that kind of like that weird scenario so i don't know like some like when i wrote it i'm like okay like the person shooting the gun and then like me just like all right like i gotta do this like it's i don't hate you for this um and that's kind of so the song's called holding the gun because i'm clever like that <laughs> a funny sort of thing see the devil makes it hurt so good oh but heaven just makes it sting little voice inside my head oh it keeps me up at night it's dragging all my shadow Kicking and screaming out into the light She says Well I really meant to love you And I really meant to care Go on reach for the sun And I'll meet you there But I know I can't reach it But I'm still gonna try Are you ready? Hold it steady And always keep your target In your sight Because Oh, you're the one I take a bullet for Even if you're the one that's holding the gun You ask me what is worth living for My answer has always been love Has always been love Has always been love really meant to love you 
And I really meant to care Go on, reach for the sun And maybe I'll meet you there But I know I can't reach it But I'm still gonna try Are you ready? Hold it steady And always keep your target In your sights Because who you're the one I take A bullet for Even if you're the one That's holding the gun Ask me what is worth dying for You know my answer Has always been love Has always been love It'll always be love It'll always be love That was Tam Garcia, everybody. That was an amazing... That was like, after you explained to me what the song was about, I was just kind of like taking it all in. That is such a cool idea. It's like, um, it, it sort of allows you to get out of your own head with the lyric writing w w like and, and kind of like really delve into your creativity and this other, you know, like it's almost like, it's almost like writing a movie script or something, but like a song for a movie script. And like, that's such a cool fucking idea. And <laughs> Um, I got the chills when you did the stop. Like I'm a big fan of like music stops. Like, you know what I mean? Like when the music stops and you kind of just like, so awesome. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. So this is Tam Garcia and let them know where they can find you. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram. That's the thing that I use the most. Tam Justin Garcia, uh, the at in front of all that. And uh, I have a, a Wix website that I'm trying to update and that's tamgarciamusic.com and Facebook because everybody's got one. <laughs> Awesome, guys. Thank you so much, and you have a good night.